Welcome to the Ekinkar Soul Adventure Podcast, where we look into the question, is there more to life than what we see? I'm your host, Doug Kunin. You're invited to listen, raise your spiritual IQ as we explore life-changing experiences with dreams, past lives, out-of-body journeys, as well as everyday miracles and amazing awakenings of wisdom, love, and spiritual freedom. This could be the most important day of your life if this is the first time you've heard of the Ek Masters. Because if you've been searching for something more than philosophy, metaphysics, or you have unanswered questions, these spiritual adepts can help you open the doors to answers by revealing the ways of the life force, the God current, also known as the Ek. In the book, Those Wonderful Ek Masters, the spiritual leader of Ekankar, Harold Klemp, writes, The Ek spiritual guides can seem to simply appear out of the mists of time to help any soul seeking love, truth, and the awareness of God. They come by day, by night, at times of great trouble or need, or in disguise to bring comfort to an old friend perhaps someone like you. It's going to be a great adventure today because a lot of people have had out-of-ordinary experiences and they're looking to confirm, what just happened here? Did I really just have an experience with a divine being? So if you've had any of those, or maybe even not, you'll relate to the startling experiences of our guest. She's Heather Devari. She's a writer, wife, mother, an insightful spiritual adventurer whose favorite topic to discuss is spirituality. Hi, Doug. Thank you so much for having me. It's fantastic that you're here, Heather. I'm looking forward to this episode with you. Your story is one of those surprise stories, and I understand it unfolded during a time in which you were at a crossroads. It certainly did. First, I'll give you just a little bit of background. Growing up, you know, I was this very independent-minded, freedom-loving person, and it was the same for my spirituality. I was always a truth seeker. I didn't just settle for one truth. I wanted to go and find out for myself. I was very stubborn like that. I would go to different churches with my friends, different temples. You know, I was always a seeker, but I felt that love of God, and that gave me a lot of confidence to be adventurous in life. I went to school, left home, went to school, and when I graduated, I went on the road traveling for work. I just wanted to get out there and embrace life. And for a while, I had this formula that really worked for me. If I worked hard and I thought positively, then things would generally fall into place, and that was success to me. You know, things were more or less on an upward trend in my life. So in my late 20s, I felt bold enough to kind of make a cross-country move all by myself to the West Coast, and this is where the tides turned drastically. That formula just stopped working. Immediately, things became very difficult. Housing was hard to find. I ran out of money very quickly. I couldn't find a job in my field. And now I had to do these odd jobs to survive, like walk dogs and clean friends' houses. I just was getting by. And frankly, this was quite a blow to my ego. This sounds like a normal adjustment period when you move, and it would be, but it lasted over the period of 10 to 12 years. Okay, that's a while. (laughs) There wasn't any stability. And when I did finally start something I thought would be great, I got excited. I put my heart and soul into this work, and then I got fired. I got fired three times, Doug. I think I got into like four car accidents. Oh, 10 years is a long time to stay positive when things just weren't working out. The time came when the people around me were having kids and getting married and buying houses and and I was single and in debt and I'm like what is going on with my life 
why is nothing working out? Something must be wrong with me. And I had this shame. I felt like I was failing. Now, during this time period, I also was continuing to seek spiritually. And the harder life got, the more feverish that need for truth became. You know, I needed answers. I had no idea how to fix what I felt was so broken. I looked into Christianity and Buddhism and Judaism, and they all had wisdom, but it wasn't what I was looking for. So I kept looking. And that led me to taking a community class in meditation and healing. And on the first day, our teacher said, you're going to be working with a healing master. And he meant an invisible spiritual healing master on the inner. So we wouldn't see them in the classroom, but we were supposed to intuit what they looked like and then draw them. So I thought, okay, interesting. I'll play along. Came up with a picture of who my healing master would be and who I drew was an older Chinese gentleman from another era. He had a very interesting red hat on, long red robes, very long kind of thin snow white beard. And I worked with him throughout my class. And when the class ended, I didn't think much about it after that. So that's a pretty detailed portrait. Did you consciously imagine that being? How did that come through? We were just told to simply imagine who this person was when they were last in the body on earth and just draw what came to mind. So there was no real proof that this healing master was actually there working with me. We just kind of had to trust. You know, I didn't put too much attention on it at the time. So fast forward to a year later, one day my friend invited me to an Ekankar light and sound service, and I was up for anything, so I was happy to go. When I walked in, I noticed there was a gentleman on video talking about a spiritual exercise. It's the first time I ever heard that phrase, spiritual exercise, and he talked about the 15 times exercise. We're going to come back later and, and ask to hear more about that, but continue on. That's a good one. Yeah. And that turned out to be Sri Harold Klemp, the spiritual leader of Ekankar. I really loved his very dry sense of humor. That struck me because it was very light. And what also made an impression was the feeling there. I did see pictures of spiritual masters on the wall, and it gave me, you know, my eyebrow raised. Oh, masters. Okay. I don't know about that. But... There was so much love, and I just felt like I had come home. After the service, I learned that students of Ekankar could receive an annual discourse, and I would be able to take classes every month. That's all I needed to hear. I signed up that day online. I was in. My mind had these little doubts, but my heart just knew I was in the right place. One of the first spiritual exercises I learned was to sing this ancient mantra, Hugh. And boy, I have to tell you, from that point on, the doors just blew open. My inner life completely changed. My dream experiences became brighter they became more vivid, and I began seeing these spiritual teachers that you mentioned. <laughs> One night, I had a dream that I was sitting on a dirt floor in a small round hut playing this ancient stringed instrument, and the hut was filled with this beautiful golden light. But as I was playing this ancient instrument, I couldn't quite strike the right chord. It sounded pretty bad. <laughs> and, and then I became aware of this older Chinese gentleman next to me. And I somehow knew he was my teacher. And he said, keep practicing. And right after that, I struck a note and it just reverberated 
beautifully throughout this hut. And I woke up. It's hard to describe the feeling. There's so much love coming from this teacher and from this dream because it just felt almost more real than the reality right here with us right now. So I should say I was an avid dreamer before this. I loved to dream. I could remember my dreams. I didn't always like what I dreamed, but I had a lot of experience with my dreams. But this dream was different than anything else I had ever had before I started practicing the hue. And when I woke up, I had just an incredible amount of love and joy, but I also had this understanding that just keep practicing these spiritual exercises, like the hue, and I'll strike the right chord, so to speak. So not long after that dream with this ancient mystery teacher, <laughs> I showed up at a Southern California uh, X center. And when I walked in the center, I could see these drawings, these beautiful color portraits of what looked like spiritual teachers. And it was explained to me, these are the Egg Masters. They work as co-workers with God. They all had different types of clothing and they were from different areas of the world. And there was a female, which I really appreciated. And then I noticed this one gentleman wearing a red hat, older Chinese gentleman, long white beard, long red robe. I'm kind of looking at this guy and somebody said, that's Light C. I'm like, this is the guy from my dream. And then my mind suddenly remembered, this guy looks an awful lot like the healing master that I drew a year ago in that class. And this wave of love came in because it was kind of unbelievable. So first I'm having a dream experience. Now, who am I to have a dream experience with this spiritual master? And then was this person with me long even before I knew about Ekinkar? I can't remember anything about that service. All I can remember is getting in my car, going home, and flipping like mad through my file cabinet to find this picture that I was praying I still had. And I found it. And it was that same person. He has kind of an unmistakable hat. Lightsey has his red robe and his beard and I couldn't believe it. I realized that I had had the protection and the love of these Ekmasters long before I even knew about Ekinkar. So how did that change your journey from that point on? Yeah, the significance of these experiences at that time in my life, it cannot be overstated. Just the loving presence of these spiritual guides along with the beautiful things that I was learning from the teachings of Ekankar, it completely shifted my perspective on life. I began to have the understanding that I was soul, not that I had a soul. So this is a very important difference to me. I didn't have a soul. I am soul. I have a body. I have a mind. I have emotions, but I am soul. That was big for me. I also began to understand that these experiences that I called failures that were just gutting me, that I allowed to gut me, instead of seeing them as huge failures, I began to see these life experiences, no matter how rough, as lessons, as spiritual lessons. And that took all of the weight out of them. And I felt like I could breathe again, and it just gave me the confidence and courage to get up and face life again and expect the best. It's not like all of my troubles went away when I found Ekinkar and the Ekmasters. They were there to show me that I was loved and inspire me. Their presence just helped me move forward. It's so interesting, Heather, because your story correlates to an experience I had and someone I knew had 
I had a friend, and I was going to college in Los Angeles, Southern California. And she asked me, well, what's all this Ekinkar stuff you're into? And I've never heard of these Ekmasters. And I said, well, it's really all about experience. So if you want to sing Hugh, we can sing Hugh and do a contemplation, a spiritual exercise. So she said, okay, sure. So we sang Hugh, which is kind of like, Hugh, Hugh. And then just going into contemplation quietly. So we did that for about 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden there was rustling going on over there, and I'm like, what's going on? She's like, oh my God, I just saw somebody. I said, what did that person look like? She says, this old Chinese guy with a little red hat and a white beard, and whoa. I said, oh, I know who that is. (laughs) Uh, I said, it's Light C. She's like, yeah, 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 sure. I mean, who knows? I could have made it up or whatever. I said, no, really. Let's go to the Eckenkar Center. This was in Santa Monica. And uh, so we drove down to the Eckenkar Center there. It was up on the second floor of a small building. And we go into the Eckenkar Center. And just like you described on the wall, there are these drawings of the Eck Masters. And she's looking around. And I said, oh, yeah, right here, this one. And she goes up six inches away and looks at a picture of light C, her jaw dropped to the floor. It's a <laughs> whoom. And then all of a sudden, her mouth closed. She had this expression on her face of, I don't know what's going on. But And she bolted out, down those stairs, out to the street. She's <gasps> breathing. I was like, well, it's okay, it's okay. They're just, they're, they're just here to help us learn the next step. And it was interesting because it was also confirmation for me, right? You know, This was my early days of vacuum car, and I had experiences. And... It's just doubly confirmation that the reality of these spiritual teachers, it depends on your own experience to find that validation. So it's just amazing to me that you had that story and I got to witness someone going through what you had, (laughs) in a sense. That's an awesome story. And the Eckmasters are not without a sense of humor. I will say that because they somehow, I mean, they're coworkers with God, They know exactly what I'm going to understand, what I need right at that time. And they also know how to just keep things light. So everybody has a teacher to fit their state of consciousness. And I love that the teachings of Ekinkar recognize that and validate it. Beautifully said. One thing I found that captured my interest early on was the living Ekmaster is able to be the complete field guide to working off all your karma in this lifetime and going on to self-realization and God-realization. So who are the Eckmasters? Well, we get to hear from an Eckmaster right now. He's the Mahanta, the living Eckmaster, Sri Harold Klemp. But being a co-worker with God means continuing to develop not just your creative powers, but your capacity to love. And this goes on and on and on. The co-workers with God, the Eck Masters, they don't see themselves as, how can I say it, functionaries in an impersonal way. What they are acting as are instruments of divine love. This love of the Holy Spirit, this love of God pours through them and they must give it out to others in service. They must give it out because love is life and life is love. And these Eckmasters are high in consciousness so that this love comes pouring through and there is no way they can block this up. They must give and give and give. They become a self-fulfilling law of love. And wherever they go, sometimes it's just listening to other people. Tell about their heartaches, tell about their smashed dreams, 
but at other times it's to help people achieve goals as they are unconsciously striving to become co-workers with God. The Eck Masters work in complete consciousness, in full consciousness of their relationship with God. Most people do not have this consciousness of their relationship with God. They have beliefs, but beliefs and awareness are not the same thing. People who belong to religions believe in the creeds of their religion. And the creeds may be right or wrong to any varying degree, but the Eck Masters know what their relationship with God is. They are not God. You do not become one with God, even though you are soul, a light of God. You become one with the Holy Spirit. I love that phrase, a self-fulfilling law of love. That just really hits home for me. And the fact that someone who's a spiritual seeker wants to know for themselves, experience for themselves, and not just take it on faith or belief. And that's what the spiritual exercises do. That's that opportunity to have those experiences and realizations. You mentioned 15 times exercise earlier. I did. How does that work? Well, it's this incredibly easy exercise where you just like the name would imply, write down you, the state of being you would like 15 times on a piece of paper. The spiritual exercises are so easy, it's, it's almost hard to believe that they work. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the importance of experiences in, on this path. Without invading your privacy, hmm. without asking you to share more than you would like to, can you give an example of one of these 15 times statements. Sure. I can tell you the one that I used this morning. I wrote, I am a golden light of Eck. I am a golden light of Eck. I am a golden light of Eck because I knew I would be coming here to work with you doing this amazing podcast this morning. And I wanted to get out of my own way as much as possible and be a vehicle for divine love like the Eck masters. That's the way I did the 15 times exercise if you want to use your own language, you can say something like, I am healthy, happy, wise, and free. I am healthy, happy, wise, and free. That's the beauty of these exercises. You can make them your own. It's just so fascinating that the statements are I am rather than I want to be, someday I will. The I am statement, I think, is a real powerful part of the 15 times because it puts into activation the as-if principle. If you act as if, you assume this state, that's the creative power of soul, right here, right now. You don't have to wait to start being who and what you want to be. Exactly. You know, flexing those creative muscles and it made sense to me. It never occurred to me I might need to do a spiritual exercise. But of course, I exercise my body. I exercise my mind. Why am I not exercising myself as soul? And it's just like physical exercise. You know, I don't go to the gym one day and expect to be able to pick up a thousand pounds. You know, after one workout, it's gradual over time. And it certainly is a gradual growing of my spiritual strength through these creative exercises. I can make them whatever I want, really. It's creative, and it's a gentle discipline of continuity, like anything else in life. You won't necessarily have a major experience the first time you try the hue. However, we are going to try the hue in our Try Your Wings segment, and we'll share just a simple spiritual exercise, because hue is often this spiritual ignition switch, this kind of spiritual spark plug that gets things going no matter what your background or faith or beliefs or non-beliefs atheists because it tunes us into the life force that's part of everybody this golden thread 
So now you get to try this out on your own, a simple spiritual exercise, singing Hu. And when we sing Hu, just remember you're saying to whatever you view to be the higher power, divine spirit, God, whichever spiritual guide you look to in your life, it's basically saying, I'm opening myself up to the highest love and wisdom you can offer. Give me the understanding and the wisdom to meet the waves of life and the problems, troubles, and whatever else. Give me the strength to meet life. So that's basically what we're doing when we do a spiritual exercise of act. And the hue is a way of putting you back in line with this divine element that's part and parcel of who we are. So we'll sing you. You. So as you gently come back, you can jot notes down of what you felt or experienced. You might have seen a light. Maybe it was a blue light. And that's a sign of the Mahanta's presence. And the blue light makes no distinctions between religions. People are simply soul, each one of us. So Heather, you've had some tremendous experiences and realizations As you're on this spiritual journey, what's life like for you today? Well, since I first found Ekankar, and that was about 12 years ago, um, my life has changed considerably. So I'm a busy mom now. I'm married. I have a job that I love. Um, Life definitely gets rocky still. That has not changed. But I have my inner guide, the Mahanta. I have the Ekmasters. And... Their love is always with me. And now through the teachings, also I have the spiritual tools. And now I have the spiritual confidence to deal with whatever comes. There is no limit in the way that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And that's really one of the fun parts of this path is just to see how God's love is everywhere. And it's a real soul adventure. It's been truly awesome. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Doug. We've explored a lot of facets of spirituality today. I just want to pause here for our listeners. If you want to see what Light Sea looks like or several other Eckmasters, go to the show notes. There's a link there to the main Eckmaster website, to our spiritual teachers page, where you can see photographs of Sri Harold Clamp, Paul Twitchell, the modern day founder and artist renderings of several of the Eck Masters and see if you recognize anyone that might have played a part in your spiritual unfoldment. We also have links to the book, Those Wonderful Eck Masters by Harold Klemp. It's also an ebook, and there's just incredible stories and experiences in there that are sure to uplift. And We sang Hugh today. Heather, do you have a resource to share? I do. It's one of my favorite things. We have the Hugh app, which you can get at the App Store. It's this gorgeous app where you can listen and watch a beautiful video about the Hugh. And there's a 20-minute Hugh song that I use every day. I listen to the Hugh song on my phone in the car. I listen when I'm working sometimes. It's just my portable spiritual exercise. I take it with me everywhere. I think you can get it on the Apple App Store, Google Play, 
and other locations. If you go to hueapp.org, that'll lead you to a whole page with Hue resources, and there'll be a link to some of the places you can get the Hue app. And anybody can sing it. I think that's important to say, that it doesn't matter what path you follow. As Sri Harold says, it doesn't change your beliefs, but it will enhance them. And that's a free app, so check it out. Thanks, everyone, for being here today. We look forward to our next soul adventure. Bye for now.